Hello, I'm David from the Viscount Classical Organs in Vista, and we're in Privet Church today to explain how the Viscount technology greatly assists the installation of instruments within churches. I'm sure the planning of a church instrument is a challenge that is enjoyed by all who undertake it. And apart from deciding what stops an instrument is going to uh, use, which is very important, another major consideration is where in the building will the instrument be placed? Clearly, when it's a real pipe organ, which uses considerable space, there are limited options. But with digital technology, the sound can come from many different locations without much significant additional cost of the installation. It's fair to say that we have a, a horrible advantage uh, over our pipe organ uh, colleagues uh, because our speakers can deliver 16 and 8 foot sound without needing the space that 16 and 8 foot pipes take. And part of the development of the solution to the best installation is working out where that sound should come from. A digital organ, of course, is condensing the sound that may come from many thousands of pipes in a real instrument into a much smaller and limited number of external speakers. And distributing that sound so that no speaker is asked to do too much work is part of the skill of making the instrument sound its best. With current digital technology, there is the ability to fine tune the voicing of an instrument in considerable detail, in just the same way that a pipe organ voicer in finishing an instrument will work in a church. But before we get to that stage, we have the bigger picture to work out is where do we want the sound to come from and where will we place individual stops within the speaker array. For many instruments, there is limited flexibility, but with a Viscount instrument, and the one behind me here is set up today to play through 28 individual audio channels, when we arrive in the building, we are not constrained to which stop is going to speak through which speaker. Uh, later on, I will show you the amazing flexibility that the Viscount audio platform offers. And this instrument can place any of the significant number of stops into any combination of the speakers that are in the building. So creating antiphonal parts of the instrument putting swell departments spaced relatively behind and above the great department, all are possible. And the joy of the Viscount solution is that none of this has to be considered before the instrument arrives in the building. This flexibility resides in all instruments that leave the factory in Italy. So the challenge today is to work out which stop goes to which of the 28 speakers that we have in the instrument, uh, or indeed a combination of them. We try and follow the same sort of rules that would apply when building a pipe organ. Uh, those have been well established over time, and they are partly driven by the, the sheer size of the pipework that the building has to accommodate. But I think many people will understand that it's very common uh, for a swell department to be behind a great department and for a choir department to be in front of both of those. Often solo divisions, um, which are generally small, are separate from the instrument altogether. Uh, the speaker plan that we have for this church today is to place the great and pedal department, which is the core of the main sound near the front of the nave. 
The swell department has been placed in the side chapel on the south side of the choir. The choir department is in front of the altar and the solo department is behind the altar. So we've created a audio stage that seeks to separate various parts of the instrument as a starting point. That may not be where we end up, as each building will dictate certain methods of planning that we only find when we're in the building and we're hearing the instrument. But the joy of working with this audio platform is that we're not constrained by any pre-defined architecture. It's totally free to be managed by the voicer on the day that the instrument is installed. I'm sat by a laptop which is connected to the Vicand instrument uh, to my side. And this shows the substantial editing capability that every Viscount Physis instrument offers in addition to the voicing that can be managed through the screen that is in each Viscount console. This editing capability allows access to note by note uh, volume and tuning, but it also helps me demonstrate to you this extraordinary audio routing capability that makes the job of installing a church instrument spectacularly easy in terms of deciding where the sound shall come from and really making it work well within the acoustic of the building. So the screen that you're looking at here is a map of all the stops that the instrument will have. So that particular display will change depending on which instrument it's connected to. And then when we wish to work on a stop, we need to highlight it. And then we can get into features that that stop uh, allows us to manage. And what I want to do today is focus on audio routing. You'll see in that screen very easily understood features such as volume, attack, release, detune, air noise. But on the right hand side at the bottom here of the screen is how that stop is a display of how that stop is being heard in the building. I mentioned earlier that this particular instrument is connected to 28 individual audio channels. And what that display is telling me is that the stop, the open diapason of the great manual, is going to sound across speakers 13 to 18 with the bass notes of that stop coming from the speakers in the center of the display, 15 and 16, and the treble notes coming from the edge of that speaker array. Now, for many manufacturers, if that was at all possible, it would be something that would have to be devised in the factory when the instrument is made. With a Viscount instrument, the voicer is free to manage this in the building at the point of installation. Most instruments uh, that are installed in the UK from the various manufacturers offer a audio signature of stereo pairs of speakers delivering stops and the classic way of the sound being split between that stereo spare pair of speakers is C and C sharp. So as you go chromatically up the compass of a stop, the sound will alternate between the left hand and the right hand speaker. And what I've just done 
in manipulating the little um, arrows at the bottom is change how that open diapason is now going to speak. And it is emulating what most other manufacturers offer. And it's now going to speak C, C sharp between C, C being coming out of speaker 13 and C sharp coming out of speaker 18. The speakers between that in this C, C sharp mode are not involved in the broadcast of that particular stop. If, for example, we were working with a solo read, a tuba, and the building wanted that as it would be in St. Paul's to operate from the west end above the door, we could place speakers in that location. And in the case, let's imagine that we placed speakers 24 to 28 of this instrument down at the west end of this building. I can then move this stop using these arrows to, 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 to speak from those different speakers. So you can see as I increase the number, the display is changing and the stop, uh, the speaker from which that stop is going to speak is now changed. And by coming over here, I can now increase this to speaker 28. And we have moved that stop from sp speakers that were in one part of the building now to speak through speakers 24 and 28 that could be elsewhere. So the first challenge now of voicing this instrument, which has got over 60 stops, is to work out where the best result of sound is going to be generated. That is partly going to be driven by how the instrument is going to be used. For example, as in this building, there is a definite choir stall arrangement below the altar, we can put many of the smaller stops in terms of volume in proximity to the choir so that more subtle accompaniment can be close to the choir. And that needn't be the stops of the choir department. It can be the quieter stops of any of the departments of this instrument. While we have this editor laptop open, there's another feature of audio routing that I'd like to bring to your attention. And that is the alternatives with which the effectively panning of a stop can be managed across a sp individual speakers or a speaker array. We're, we're familiar when looking at organs to seeing certainly the facade pipes uh, developing a pattern. Very often we see tall pipes in the center and short pipes to the side. Tall pipes, of course, giving the uh, deeper sounds. And sometimes we see arrays where there are effectively two peaks of tall pipes with um, slopes going off in either direction from those centers. Um, refer to that as a double cusp. And one of the features of the Viscount editing capability is to place the sound in the same format that the pipes will have been laid onto the soundboard of an instrument. And you can see here how a graphic display of those alternatives. So with the aid of that little picture, we're being told that in that particular mode, called double cusp, the sound is being routed between speakers 24 and 28 with the bases in two positions within that array as set out in that little diagram. But there are alternatives. There is a display called a single cusp, and in that 
it's a slightly simpler audio pattern with the bass in the center of the array with the trebles to left and right. So in that sense, we are going C, C sharp, C, C sharp. The, 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 it's replicating exactly what happens when the pipes are laid out on a soundboard in that particular format. There's another option. We sometimes see the small pipes in the center of the array and the bass pipes to the extreme sides. So that is the opposite of the cusp with bass at the edge and treble in the center. And not often seen, though I must say I've seen it uh, quite a bit on instruments in the continent, a straight slope of pipes on a soundboard. So bass on one side, treble on the other, with the pitch moving uniformly from left to right. There is another clever audio routing within every Viscount instrument. And this is called poly. And poly can be made to work over up to six speakers. And you can see as I ask it to do that, the display changes and tells me that it is looking now to deliver the sound over six speakers. And what poly does is very cleverly work out if a sound being sent to a speaker is in conflict with another sound. You may be familiar with the concept that when an organ comes, a digital organ comes up to full volume, it is one of the harder credible sound deliveries to make. And that's because so much sonically is being asked of the speakers. And it is in that build up to a full volume sound that there is the greatest risk of conflict in speaker um, delivery. And this, should we hear it, gives us an option to eliminate that and, and really credibly deliver a full volume uh, sound. In this short video, I have tried to explain the extraordinary uh, flexible audio routing capability that allows us to install Viscount organs in churches. I haven't played for you any of these differences, but we're going to end this little presentation with a performance by Richard McVie on the instrument where I hope you will at least be able to judge the overall quality of the instrument and now have a slightly better understanding of the work that was done to prepare it for the recording.